<laughs> ah, Disney, known for its magic, overpriced parks, old-timey racism, and ability to create timeless characters that will live in our hearts forever. If there's one thing that a mega corporation like Disney understands, it's villainy. So it comes to no surprise that Disney has some of the best villains ever created. Ones that commit heinous deeds while evilly laughing their way into movie history. Everyone has a favorite Disney villain, whether it's the true classics like Captain Hook, Ursula, and Maleficent, to newer modern villains like Syndrome and Dr. Facilier. Yet there's been a trend in recent Disney movies that's seen the antagonist role start to change. Lots of Disney films nowadays are starting to shift how they use their stories' villains, and that's by making their films' antagonists more realistic, and in some cases, not even having a bona fide villain. Disney has been heading in a new direction with its storytelling that's been lessening the impact of a traditional villain. Now, what do I mean when I say traditional villain? Well, what I mean is a character that is by definition the antagonist. A character whose goal it is to stop or prevent the hero from reaching their own goals for whatever reason. Let's list some examples just so we're all on the same page. In The Lion King, Scar's main goal is to become king. This conflicts with Simba's goal to become king, so Scar devises an insidious plan to reach his goal by murdering his own brother and framing Simba. In Hercules, what's Hades' goal? to rule Olympus by dethroning his brother Zeus. This conflicts with Hercules' goal of rejoining his father on Mount Olympus and upholding Zeus's rule. So now that we've established what a traditional villain is, what do we have going on in modern Disney films? Let's take a look at the last sampling of animated Disney movies, Encanto and Turning Red. Oh, that's right! Strange World is currently the most recent Disney movie. My girlfriend, her grandmother, and I tried watching it the day before I recorded this, and we all fell asleep. Like, I'm sorry if you enjoyed this one, but holy shit, did it just not suck me in at all? But there's a scene in which the characters are playing a fictional card game, kind of like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, and the game is all about living in harmony. And one character... Ah, oh, shit, what the fuck's his name again? Uh, Ethan. Sorry, I had to look it up. He explains how, oh, you know, you don't need a bad guy to make the game great. And the other older characters don't quite understand that. One of them I even remember says it's bad storytelling to not have a villain. I feel like that was Disney's subtle way of clapping back at people like me who want to see more villains. But Strange World is boring and ain't shit at the box office, so I'll take that with a pinch of salt. So I just wrapped up recording all of the voiceover for this video, and I just remembered that Lightyear was a movie that came out. I completely forgot about it, and it seems like everyone else did too, so whoops. But that should kind of go to show you uh, the state that Disney movies are in. Anyway, so basically, I didn't sit through it, and I really don't want to, so we're just going to go ahead and ignore that one. Clearly, I do all the research for my video topics thoroughly. You tried. <coughs> all these movies focus on paternal relationships and families, and the main character conflicts come from the overbearingness parental figures inflict on their families. Which is fine. These movies are fine in how they tell their stories. And make no mistake. Not all movies need a villain. But I feel like a fun villain has been a great film ingredient that has been missing from a lot of Disney's recent offerings. I feel that the best case for why Disney should bring back traditional villains can be made in three points. Villainous Variety Disney movie main characters are usually the good-hearted type, with plucky, can-do attitudes that make you root for them on their journeys. They have to remain pure and kind-hearted in order to remain the good guy we all root for. Villains don't have that same guideline. Traditional Disney villains commit the crimes they do for typically one reason. They want to. Whatever goal they have, they'll do whatever it takes to make it happen, whether it's manipulation, kidnapping, or even murder. And that's what makes villains more interesting. They aren't bound by any loyalty or sense of good. They're doing what they do because it helps them reach their individual goal. 
and watching a character be a jerk because they want to makes these characters so enjoyable to watch. These negative characteristics become essential tools for crafting such great villains, like Gaston's narcissism, Frollo's manipulation, and Hades' rage. Now, there are twist villains, which is a subgenre that Disney has enjoyed using for a while now. For those unfamiliar, a twist villain is a character that was first introduced as a good guy, but then in the last chapter of the film, it's revealed that they're actually the bad guy. Think Hans from Frozen. Which is fine, but this ties into my point. We spend a majority of the film seeing them as good guys, so when they reveal their true nature, we don't really get to see them act evil. And when they do, it's not as impactful because this is an unfamiliar side to the character that doesn't give us the full-out villain we love to see. We don't have as much time to enjoy the villainy, and it's fun watching these characters use negative tendencies with such glee. I guess the best way to summarize this point is, it feels so good to be so bad. Villain songs! You were so flat, that sounded terrible. Oh, fuck Whoa. you! You Whoa. always Whoa. write me you know, Excuse me for trying to have no, everything. I guess that everyone knows that villains get to have the best song in the musical. Villain songs are usually the best because there's that sense of dark fun that comes with them. Don't want to sing about your hopeful outlook on life? Good! Sing about your glorious plans for world domination. Bored of singing about wanting more? Good! belt out how deliciously evil you are. And what's a better way to wrap up a villain song than with a big evil laugh? <laughs> There's honestly not much more I can say about this without playing the actual villain songs, and the House of Mouse isn't exactly going to let me get away with using any of their audio, so just listen to this Disney villain song playlist if you need to educate yourself on the art of the villain song. Just, uh, please come back. Villains just wanna have fun! How was that? Yeah, that was better. Villains are just so much fun to watch. Watching them scheme and plot to destroy their foes is what the Disney magic is made out of. I miss when villains were unapologetically evil. And that was fine. Disney villains today are mostly family elders who unknowingly abuse their families. And don't get me wrong, it's cool these lessons are being talked about more. I like how it's handled in a more realistic way. Abuela Madrigal and Ming from Turning Red don't mean to hurt their loved ones, they just love them so intensely that they're blinded by how by smothering their kids, they're only hurting them. But that trope is starting to get tiresome. I miss when villains were allowed to be villains. Frollo murders a woman on screen, Cruella wants to murder puppies, Clayton's trying to poach gorillas. The reason these villains stand out is because we get to see them be... Evil! 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 We got to see the revelry these villains take in committing their heinous acts. You don't really get that in Disney's modern movies. And now it's time to talk about the one film that had not one, but two fantastic villains. Puss in Boots 2, The Last Wish. Oh, oh, what took you so long, idiot? Puss in Boots 2 features two primary antagonists, Death and Jack Horner. One is literally all the fears of the protagonist personified. Puss doesn't value his nine lives and lives recklessly, so Death comes and shows him that he ain't shit and forces Puss to face his own mortality and come to terms with loving what you have and living for others instead of yourself. Holy shit, this was a kid's movie? Not only is he badass, but he's treated on screen with real weight to his character. Every minute he's on screen, you're legitimately on edge. And then there's the big beautiful boy, Jack Horner. This guy has been such a breath of fresh air. He's such a horrible person. He allows his men to be killed. He actively only helps himself. And he literally only wants power for himself and nobody else. And he's arguably the best part of the movie. 
This character is just so much fun to watch. You love to hate this guy, and you get the entire film to enjoy his awfulness. This is what Disney needs. This isn't a bad guy. This is a cold mother fucking villain. Disney needs to bring back this type of character to their films going forward. If I'm not mistaken, Mother Gothel and Dr. Facilier are the two most recent classic Disney villains who aren't twist villains, and they're both amazing. Dr. Facilier especially has become one of my favorite Disney villains, in part because we get to watch him manipulate and scheme his way through the entire film. Same thing with Mother Gaslight. Look, I'm not trying to say that one is better than the other, or that all movies need a villain, because they don't. It would just be really cool to see Disney come up with some newer villains to add to their already fantastic lineup. That's all. As much fun as it's been for Disney to encourage elder abuse, I really think now's a great time to bring back more traditional villains. Jack Horner's popularity should send a signal to Disney that people want their villains back. So, Disney... What do you say?